That's what Peter has been vocal about, the double standards of the anti-war left, and he joins us now to discuss more. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. I mean, it, it, it's the logic of many of these uh, left-wing individuals that you accuse of being apologists for Putin. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That is the way they think. Um, they rightly criticise aspects of British and American foreign policy. They rightly criticised um, the intervention in Iraq, was it, which was an absolute disaster. But I think since then, they really have been even more one-sided in that they have never organised any protests about the Russian intervention in Georgia in 2008, uh, the annexation of Crimea in 2014, and of course, Russia's terror bombing of Syria since 2015. Uh, what Russia has been doing in Syria is basically the same as what they're now doing in Ukraine. They have been reducing Syrian cities to rubble. Yet all through the last seven years of this terror campaign in Syria, stop the war did nothing. And indeed, besmirched and smeared, very brave, heroic uh, Syrian democratic and left-wing activists who were opposing Russia's intervention. So it's incredible double standards. In just the few days before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, Stop the War Coalition was rubbishing claims that Russia was preparing to invade. Even though they had 130,000 troops on the border at that time, they said, oh, no, Russia's not um, going to invade. You're just a warmonger. You're just stirring a new Cold War. They also claimed that it was NATO that was, quote, nuclear warmongering and proposing an interventionist agenda. Well, hang on. NATO was not threatening potential nuclear war. That was President Putin when he later went on to say that he would retaliate with uh, weapons unimaginable. And of course, um, the, the real danger and the real threat yeah. came from Russia, yeah. as we saw. But Peter